In the name of Allah, the merciful, Allah whom I worship and ask for guidance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all, my brothers and sisters out there that are sitting in their living room. I'm glad to have you back with us in our series of prophetic straight, uh, traits. I hope that you and I have enjoyed our shows in the past, that we have found a room for the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that we did not find. I am your host, Abdul Hakim Ali. I'm glad that you're giving us a chance again, Al Huda Channel, to entertain your home. I hope your family is with you. You're holding hands with your wife, your children are sitting there, anxious to learn a new story of the greatest man ever created. Today, my brothers and sisters, I'd like to also talk about the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how he lived. Was he rich? Did he own mansions? How many guards did he have? How many horses, camels, the transportation of that time? What kind of clothes that he used to wear? Because we always have a perception these days of those who have control and power that these, they have these huge mansions that take a whole block, great walls, cameras all over, guards with those big machine guns protecting their castles and mansions, wealth and counted. They spend it as they wish with no accountability. Let us see how the greatest man ever lived. How did his family live? What kind of wealth did he possess? Brothers and sisters, when Jibreel came to the Prophet Muhammad and alerted him that he is the messenger of Allah, at that moment, he and his family had more than 8 million dinars. 8 million dinars because his wife was among the richest people of her time. That's, that's beyond calculation in our time. That's way beyond Bill Gates and what he has. And by the time he died, he had his shield in the hands of a Jew to guarantee that he'll pay back whatever he had taken as a loan. Collateral. SubhanAllah. Let us see how he lived. The home that his wife Aisha lived in, how vast and how wide was it? How many rooms did it have? In the hadith that is authentic, that the Rasul woke up one night to pray. And Aisha was sleeping. And then whenever he would about to do his sujood, he will have to squeeze her leg so she can fold her legs so he can find room to put his forehead. His room was only enough for him to pray. And his wife had to sleep in front of him while he was praying, my brothers and sisters. Aisha said that the house of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will see a month and two. A moon in another, a full moon in another, a month and two. And no fire will be lit. And nothing is there to be cooked. And only dates and water will be their food. At times he will come home and he will say to his family, is there any food to eat? They will say, no, he said, I'm fasting. He will initiate his intention of fasting. And at other times he will intend to fast, assuming there's nothing to eat. And then his family would say, O Messenger of Allah, we have food for you to eat. And he will break his fast. His day will come and he does not know. Will he be eating or will he be fasting? In the hadith one day, he walks out and he finds Abu Huraira in the street. It's a hot day. 
And Abu Huraira is walking. And the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi would tell him, what brought you out in such a hot day? He said, hunger, Ya Rasulullah. Food. He said, Wallahi, the same reason that brought you out has brought me out. I am hungry also. And the growling stomach of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had to be calmed down by two rocks squeezing his belly to calm some of the growling and hunger that he was in. The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lived, as he said, as a miskeen, a person of need, one that has enough to eat for his day, but nothing for tomorrow. In the hadith, Abu Dharrin says that the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never stored food for the next day. He would eat what he has, and if there's extra, he would donate it for someone else. He comes home one time, and he had a sheep that he has brought home to Aisha. When he comes home, he says, is there anything left of that sheep? She said, Ya Rasulullah, I have donated all of the sheep except the shoulder. Because she knew that he loved to eat this part of the sheep. He said, no, Aisha, everything is left except the shoulder. Because when she donated, you will find it Yom al Qiyamah. Abu Huraira one day was hungry, extremely hungry. And likewise with the Prophet, peace be upon him. We're talking about the head of the state here, brothers and sisters. He could have ordered for food, and food would be provided. He could order to be the richest man. In fact, when he was in Mecca, the, the, the people of Mecca, Quraysh came to his uncle Abu Talib and they said, Tell your nephew to stop calling to what he's calling to and we will give him what he wants. If he wants to be the richest man among us, we will have him to be the richest man among us. If he wants to be the king and the leader and the head of the state and the one that gives the commands, we will give him that leadership. If he wants to marry the most beautiful woman among us, we will have him marry the most beautiful woman among us. They were willing to give him what he wishes and his response was, Oh uncle, if they were to put the sun in my right hand, in the moon in my left hand in return I leave what I call to I would die before I do so until my call is answered and heard my, my religion is heard or I die he could have prayed and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala glory to him could have made the mountains into gold and silver for him but he said I wish to live as a miskeen and be resurrected Yawm Al-Qiyamah on the Day of Judgment with those poor individuals. So that day, they were hungry. And there was a group of companions there, and someone dated a bowl, donated a bowl of milk. A bowl of milk. Abu Huraira said to himself, I hope the Prophet does not ask me to serve the people because I am so hungry and I fear no milk will be left when it's my turn. Because in Islam, when you serve people, you're the last one to drink. But Abu Huraira said to, while he was saying this to himself, the Rasul said to Abu Huraira, Ya Abu Hir, serve the people. So he starts serving and people start drinking. Drink, drink, one after another. And the bowl is still full. The blessings of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then after they all finished, Abu Hurairah was looking into the bowl and the milk is still there. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even though he was hungry, he said, drink ya Abu Hurairah. So Abu Hurairah drank and drank. And then he was full. He reached the bowl to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, drink again. And he did it for the third time until he said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, there is no more room in my stomach for any more. The Rasul ﷺ then drank. Just because he was the head of the state. And he's the messenger, that doesn't mean he start first. 
Tell me today, any CEO or administrator or leader in the world that allows his people to eat, and he does not eat until they eat. He's not full until they're full. On the contrary, my brothers and sisters, the people suffer while the leaders don't. The Rasul during the battle of Al Ahzab, he was working with everyone else, digging and carrying rocks. And people were chanting and singing. Hey, we are the ones that gave the pledge to the Prophet Muhammad that we will struggle with him as long as we live. And they were carrying those rocks from the ditch, the trench that they were making, trying to protect the city of Medina from an attack that's imminent, that's coming. And they were hungry. They were all hungry. They were working long hours. And the Prophet with them. Then Abu Ayyub came. After he had went to his house and said that the Prophet is hungry. Do you have any food for the Prophet? She said, I only have a small quantity of food. So go to the Prophet and whisper into his ear. And tell him to come. And if he wishes, he can bring one or two people with him. Abu Ayyub comes to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whispers what his wife had said, and all of a sudden the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam turns to everyone that is working in the trench. Over a thousand people. And he said, Abu Ayyub and his wife are inviting you to a feast. A feast? What feast? It's just a little quantity of food, but he, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was about to bless that food. And he said to Abu Ayyub, Go back home and tell your wife not to lift the lid until I come. And not to turn the fire down. The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi comes, says a prayer, and blesses the food, and everyone eats. Everyone. He lived a simple life. A life like everyone else. He did not want to see himself different from his followers. And neither did his followers ever see him different. As I said at the beginning, when he passed away, he didn't leave nothing behind him for his family to inherit. His own shield was in the hands of another because he had not paid back a debt. And his family had to pay it on behalf of him. He was born an orphan and died a poor man but lived rich with people. As I come to a conclusion, he is still rich with us. His name is the most honored and used name in the world because he was real. He was true. He was Muhammad. I thank you for being with us. I'm your host, Abdul Hakim Ali. And I hope to see you in the upcoming episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.